and welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. I'm Sister Hall and this is Sister Annie Townsend and we welcome you here tonight. Let's bow with a word of prayer. Father God, we come this evening in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, just thanking you for who you are, God. Just thanking you for giving us this opportunity to discuss your word. Father, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus. We thank you for your precious Holy Ghost, God. Lord God, we just thank you for your word. Help us to get your word into our heart, Lord God. And we hope that someone this evening gets something that helped them along in that Christian journey. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Good evening, like, like she said once again, uh, we are getting ready for uh, our Bible lesson, and it will be done in two parts. We have one part for the children and one part for the adults, and we would like for you, if you would, just get your Bibles and follow along with us because the lesson will be the same uh, for children and for the adults. So, Tom, would you please uh, read our subject for tonight and our other information? Okay, our subject tonight is Israel asks for a king. Our background scripture will be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 through 9, chapter 10, verses 17, 17 through 26. Our lesson scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 4 through 7, 10. Verses 17 through 24. Our key verse tonight is, You have now rejected your God, who served you out of all disasters and calamities. And you have said, No appointed king over us. Which is 1 Samuel 10, verse 19. And just before Sister Hall read the faith block, we want you to know we have three faith blocks tonight because we have children of different ages, but we chose one that was uh, really pertaining to the lesson. Uh, if we had, you see our poster, God's way is best. So we have three different ones so our children can at least see we had just chosen one for them. So Tom, would you please read the faith blocks? Okay, uh, first one is uh, God's way is the best. The next one is follow God's way. And the last one is God is king. All right, and our objective tonight is to help the children understand it's better to do things God's way. It's better to do things God's way. So now let's say hello to our children. Hello, hello children. And we're looking to see you really soon. We've really seen some soon. of you uh, during the month, but we'd like to see all of our children come, along with your parents and the other adults. Yes. All right. Um, do you believe God's way is best? Children, I want you to think about it. Do you believe that God's way is best? And our next question is, should we remember the good things God does for you? We want you to think about that. And in, in today's Bible story, the Israelite people asked God for something. And I want you to listen closely to the story so you can answer the question. So can we please read our story? Okay. Israel asked for a king. Samuel told the people of Israel, God says, I'll save you from Egypt, but now you have rejected me. You want a king in charge instead of God. Samuel told all the tribes to stand in front of him. The tribe of Benjamin was chosen. He called for each man, and Saul was chosen. But when they looked for Saul, they could not find him. The Lord God said, He is hiding behind the luggage, the baggage. When they brought him out, he was taller than anybody else. Everybody. Some will say it. See the man that God had chosen? God chose uh, Saul. Okay. And uh, everybody looked, and since he was so much bigger than the rest of them, they wanted him to be king. So what they said was, 
Long live the king. All right. That was their, their phrase. Their Long phrase live him. the king. Yeah. All right, children, since the hall read the story and they wanted a new king, they want a new king. They didn't want this king. God's way is best. This is our big king. They did not want him, so they wanted a human king. Yeah. They, want, they wanted a person. They did not want the, the true king. So uh, what we would like to do now is we would like to look for you to look at the screen and look at the king uh, that's on our screen. Uh, he was a handsome person. He was tall, and as Sister Hall already said, he was shoulders and head taller than all of the people. And he said he was the most handsome man in Israel. And he had to be handsome. He was the most handsome man in Israel. So we're going to bring our lesson out a little bit more. We're going to do a little skit. And we're going to use one of our older children to help us along with our skit. We will be using R.J. Ryan today. And so, Ryan, we hope that you are listening and looking at us today because we are using you in our skit. And our skit is getting ready to begin. Hi, everybody. Hi, Ryan. May I ask a question? Yes, you may. Children, do you like to go shopping with your clothes, for your clothes? My mom and dad always make me uh, make fun choices when they buy my shirts. Well, Ryan, parents always try to make the best choice for their children. I hope you like the shirts that they choose for you. I do. But yesterday I told them I wanted to pick out my own shirt. I wanted to make the choice. You know, Ryan... The people in our Bible story today told God that they wanted to make their own choice too. But their choice was not a very good one. They chose to have a king instead of letting God be their leader. That was not a very good choice. And uh, they chose him only because he was taller. That was silly. That, was, that seemed like it was silly, Ryan. I hope you made a good choice in picking out your shirt. Yes, I did. But I asked my folks to help me. I think that's very nice that you asked for help. We should always remember that we can ask God for help too. Yep. We'll, we will not forget like those silly people in our Bible story. Well, I better get going. See everybody next time. Thank you, Bye. Ryan. Thank you, Ryan, for coming by. Children, tonight, we are going to end with one little song, and that's just a verse that I have decided to follow Jesus. On the count of three, we want you to sing along with us at home. And I'm sure that your parents know the song, too, and so we're going to ask the parent to just help our children sing just one little verse of I have decided to follow Jesus on the count of three. One, two, three. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Children, we thank you for participating with us tonight, and parents, we thank you for being there with your children. Now we are going to move on to the adult lesson, and we hope that uh, everyone got something out of the children's lessons tonight. We are moving on to our adult lesson. So, Tom, would you please read our subject now? Okay, our subject is, we want a human king. And our key verse is, coming from the NIV, is you have now rejected your God, who saved you out of all disasters and calamities. And you have said, no appointed king over us. Okay. Which is coming from 1 Samuel 10, 19 All right. We want a human king. We want 
a human being. And sister, how? Why does this lesson matter? We tend to be influenced by the people around us, for good or for ill. How do we discern what voices to listen to? The elders chose to listen to the people rather than following the leadership of God. All right. We, a lot of time, we choose to follow the leadership or the influence of other people instead of following the true king, which is God. At this time, we'd like to read uh, our scripture lesson, and we'd like to do it from the NIV, starting with uh, 1 Samuel 10, 17. I mean, I'm sorry, not uh, 1 Samuel 10, but uh, 1 Samuel 8, verses 4 through 7. And the first part reads in the NIV, So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons, I'm, I'm, I'm a little mixed up here, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint the king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this is please Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as king. So now could you continue? Okay. Uh, 17. Uh, 17 through 19a says, Saul sermon the people of Israel to the Lord of his mitzvah, and said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought Israel up out of Egypt, and I delivered you from the power of Egypt, and all the kingdom that oppressed you. 19a says, But you have now rejected your God, who saved you out of all the, the disasters and calamities, and you have said, no appointed king over us. All right, continuing with 19b. So now present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and clans. When Samuel had all Israel come forward by tribe, the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. Then he brought forth forward the tribe of Benjamin. Clan by clan and Matri's clan was was taken finally. Saul's son of Pish was taken. But when they looked for him, he was not to be found. So they inquired further of the Lord. Has the man come here yet? And the Lord said, yes, he has hidden himself among the supplies. They ran and brought him out, and as he stood among the people, he was a head taller than any of the others. Samuel said to all the people, Do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. Then the people shouted, Long live the king. If you will continue to just look at our lesson, uh, just going back, we had a devotional. We had a devotional, and the devotional came from Psalm 93. And all the devotional was saying was that the Lord is king. The Lord is king. And, it's, and it also said that his majesty and the power of his royal robe is greatness, splendor, and dignity. Now, so how he says that majesty and power are his robe. Mm -hmm. And they were just talking about the greatness, the splendor, and the dignity of God. So that's in our devotional. And it fits right along with our lesson. When we look at the focus, it talks about, say that the advertisement industry uses art to influence people's attitude, the opinion and behavior without looking closely at the evidence. Had truth is what they're telling when we look at 
the what the industry is doing today in their advertisement. Mm -hmm. You have a great influence on the people because then it's really not telling the truth, they're telling the half truth when they when they come to uh, talking about the different things that we see in advertising. And this is the same thing that was in our lesson today. The people were just kind of looking at the influence of other people. But God had already told them mm -hmm. about uh, if they had got mixed up with the Canaanites, what was going to happen because these were very sinful people. So God had won Israel of the Canaanites' persuasion. God said that their vision, that would blur their spiritual vision, just by getting along, getting them with these people. But Satan is still doing the same thing today. He's blurring our vision um, by us looking at the other things that's happening, as we said back in the focus, that uh, these appetizers showing us all these good things, the things that we think that are good. And they actually not. They're just not telling the whole truth about it. So we can stop this by remembering the source of our blessings, glorify him, and submit to his authority over our lives. We can stop all of this by mm -hmm. submitting to God who is our true king. Now, uh, if we're looking at the lesson, the book of Samuel, uh, was a, a two, it was divided into two parts because that book was so long. But we are in 1 Samuel tonight. It was 1 Samuel and also 2 Samuel. But this goes way back to the part when we, uh, when Hannah wanted to have a child. Mm -hmm. So uh, when Hannah wanted to have a child, God gave her the child, and she gave it back to the Lord. And so as he grew up, he became Israel's most outstanding judge, and he was a prophet. He was a bright moment in Israel's dark history. So uh, starting in... <clears throat> In the early part of the chapter, we, we are in chapter 8 tonight, starting out. If we look at the early part of the chapter, uh, Samuel had uh, chosen his sons to be prophets. Mm -hmm. And they were corrupt. <laughs> they were corrupt. And so the, the elder people wanted a king. And this just tells us right now that um, now he had raised his children, hopefully. And this give our, our parents a good idea of what needs to happen with your children. Raise your children right, and when they get older, hopefully they will follow in those ways, but sometimes they might not. But you don't blame yourself because if you train them the right way, do not blame yourself because when children are older, when they become adults, they get to have their own minds. And so we need to remember that. So don't beat ourselves up because our children kind of stray away from the way that you taught them. And that's the main thing that was coming out of our lesson today. Yeah, because sometimes they'll come back to them. They'll remember what their parents told them, what it is still. It's still there, but it, it'll come up when you're older and you're going through. It's like, I remember my mom telling me this to make sure of this and <coughs> that that's... Uh, something good because a lot of stuff that I learned when I was a child. Okay. And I remember my mom telling me, you don't do this, you don't do that. When you get older, you'll learn. The thing that you're doing now, it's, gonna, it, it's not good, but you're going to learn. You're going to remember okay. what I told you that you was going to go through. You're going to see this again. Right. I can remember right now, Sister Howell, a lot of things that uh, when I'm doing something at home sometimes, mm -hmm. I can just hear my mother saying certain things about certain things that they had already taught us. Mm -hmm. Now here in our lesson, uh, in eight, uh, chapter 8, verses 4 through 9, Israel wanted a king. But now on the surface, they just kind of realized that there was some reason that they said that they wanted a king, but actually the commentary said that the people actually did not know exactly why they wanted the king. But on the surface, these were some of the reasons. Samuel's son were not fit to lead Israel. Mm -hmm. All right? The 12 tribes had their problems uh, working things out because these tribes had their own leaders and they had their own territory. Okay? And uh, they were hoping that if they got a king, that that would unite the tribes and uh, into one nation and also unite the army into just one army. Now the people want to be like the neighboring nations. Mm -hmm. Now this is exactly what God did not want because 
having a team would make it easy to forget that God was their real leader. So God had warned them of, Canaan, of the Canaanites association because it would be easier for them to seduce them. Israel was so, uh, was a type of nation that they would kind of go along with anything that came along and God already knew that. So he didn't want that to happen because it would seduce them and trap them into their way of living. Now, when we go to other parts, to the other part, now this angered uh, Samuel because he was thinking that the people rejected him, mm -hmm. but God told him that they are rejecting me. They are not rejecting you, so don't you feel that they are re uh, rejecting you? Okay, but he said he prayed to God, and God told him to give them what they wanted. They give them what they want. They want the human king who said, give them what they want. And we are guilty. Are we guilty of the same thing, trusting others before we trust God? God is used the last one that we go to when we're trying to get some problems or things um, ironed out. Mm -hmm. So I want you to keep this in mind, this question. Are we guilty of putting more trust in human relationships more often than in God? And that answer is yes. God had been Israel's everything. He had, he told them, uh, Samuel told them that he had delivered them out of Egypt. He had protected them when enemies were around. He had provided for them. So actually, God was their everything. And God is our everything. Mm -hmm. well, as I said, we go along and trust things from other people rather than trust uh, what God said. Mm -hmm. now, now, when you get to uh, the part in, uh, cha in uh, chapter 10, we move to chapter 10, verses 17 through 24. We talk about the acclamation of the king, that's 17 through 19, and then we talk about the gathering of the tribe. So, since they wanted the king, Samuel called all the tribes together. See, God had already told Samuel what was going to be happening. Mm -hmm. He had already told him. And uh, when we look back into the lesson, uh, Saul and another one of his servants had gone looking for his dad's donkeys. The donkeys were lost, and they were looking for the donkeys, and so they could not find them. So they decided to go to see the seer. He said, let's go to the man that has the vision, and that was um, Samuel. Mm -hmm. So when, when he went to Samuel's home, Samuel already knew that he was coming because God had showed him everything. Mm -hmm. And then when he got ready to leave, he already anointed him with the oil. And uh, <clears throat> they went on back, uh, we went on back to their home, and uh, Samuel called the tribes together. And that's verses uh, 19b through 24. The tribe of Benjamin was the smallest tribe, and the king was chosen out of the tribe of Benjamin, mm -hmm. and that was all. When they called for him, he could not be found. And now, now if it had been the real God, he could have been found. Mm -hmm. But he was showing his weakness already because when they called for him, he could not be found. They found him among the baggage. The baggage. They ran and fetched him, and he was higher than all the other people around. The most handsome person in Israel. Taller than everyone, and I mean that just off the eye of the rest mm -hmm. of the people. So, how you had a comment on that? Anything there? Mm -hmm. I already covered it. Okay. So, the Lord has chosen the king that was none like him around, or like in the other people, and all the people shouted. What did shout to Hail to the king. Hail, Hail to the king. It's long live the king. Long live the king. Like I said, he was handsome. But one thing, if this was God's permission will, mm -hmm. because uh, that he granted this, this the king song, because if you look back and think about uh, on some of the other lessons we had, Judah, the tribe was supposed, I mean, the king was supposed to come out of Judah. Mm -hmm. It says the scepter of kingship belonged to the tribe of Judah. So this was just God's permission will to let this happen when he let the, uh, the king come out of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And that last acclamation that we had, it says that's an expression of approval when they praise him. Uh -huh. Long live yeah. the king. Long live the king. So uh, I like to read, um, if you look at the last part of the lesson, they have a, 
you know, that life application. Could you read the first part of the life application, Sister Hall? Okay. This week, evaluate your decision-making process. Next, determine how others, how often you uh, consult God first before making your decision. How many are influenced by others instead of God and his word? How many decisions do you base on your self-interest rather than on God's will? Finally, in what specific way will you commit to following God's will and purpose for your life to drive your decision making in the future? I have another little part right here in the life application that says, God has an amazing plan for your life. What's amazing is that the role God has for you is just for you. Pray and ask God to reveal to you his plan for your life. In prayer, simply ask God, what is, what is, or what is it are you asking God to do? And this leads us right back to what our, um, our verse is for today, our main verse is for today. That's our key verse. Mm -hmm. And in and our lesson, it says, you have now rejected your God who saved you out of all your disasters and calamities. And you have said, no, appoint a king over us. That was 1 Samuel 10, 19, 8. But we still want you to remember that. God's way is the best way. No matter what we think, God's way is the best way. Just hold us our lesson for next, our next, our next lesson. Our lesson topic for next week is the heart of a leader. The devotional reading is Acts chapter 13, verses 21 through 31. The background scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 16, Verses 1 through 13, and the printed text is 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 through 13. And could you go on and read the printed prayer? Okay. Let us pray. Dear God, we acknowledge you as our only King. We give you honor, glory, and praise for your faithfulness toward us. Help us avoid deceptive, worldly influence on our attitude, behavior, and decision by trusting in your wisdom to guide our lives. Just know things I ask in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yes, <laughs> okay, and our thought to remember is there is room for only one king in our heart. All right. There's room for only one king in our hearts. We uh, thank you for participating with us tonight. We'd like for you to come to visit here uh, with us at any time at Greater Galilee Baptist Church. And our pastor is Reverend J.J. Richardson, Sr. We're looking forward to seeing you. Have a good evening and continue to please be saved. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.